Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna animate some block quotes. We're gonna make use of the text animator, maybe go a little bit deeper into how you select and refine your animations in there for larger paragraphs of text. We're gonna talk about some expressions to turn this into a bit of an automated template, and then we're gonna talk about uh, some embellishments that you can add, because what's a good quote without a lot of embellishments? And that's quite enough embellishment out of me, so let's open up After Effects and get into it. One more thing before we get going, I wanna thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Their funding helps keep the channel going and frees up the hours needed to produce this stuff. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward from anywhere at any time. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit into your life. Personally, lots of the business and marketing courses on there really appeal to me. I'm very bad at social media, so a course like Analytics and Authenticity with Sophia Chang is perfect for someone like me. I wanna reach more people, but I don't really know the steps to do it. And her course really takes a more analytical and actionable approach. So if social media, Instagram, Twitter, those are things that you work with or work on to try to promote your work, I would recommend uh, checking these courses out. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable with an annual subscription coming in at less than $10 a month. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. So the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership to Skillshare. So if you want to animate a quote, we should probably uh, go about copying and pasting one. So you copy that, you grab your text tool, you click out there, you paste, and already we have our first problem. Working with text in this way, it's not the way to do it. We want to instead draw a box to create some bounding box text, and then we paste inside of that. Bounding box text will cause the text to wrap as we, as we hit the edge. We can now format this up. We can change the size of the box. We can work with our character and paragraph window to get this exactly how we like. We might still need to put this on a separate line and then format that maybe over to the left here. Maybe we'll take these and, and make them at 100. I don't know. But we'll format this up uh, to be exactly how we like it. And especially if we're making a kind of template, we want to make sure that this kind of formatting will work for all future uses. So the next thing we need to do is to animate this. Now we animate our text usually using the text animators. I'm gonna drop on here a change in opacity and I'm gonna add in there a change in position. What we're basically doing is giving some instructions. We're saying, how do we wanna change the text? And then with the range selector, which text are we going to change? So let's change all the text to make it 100 pixels to the left, negative 100 here, and the opacity will go down to zero. So all of the text we've selected that's inside this range selector has been made over to the left and totally transparent. So one way we might animate this is by changing the size of that range that we're selecting. We might shrink it. So I'm gonna set a keyframe uh, at the start here at zero. So the start is going to change and then that is going to just ooh, animate through. So it's selecting less and less and less as the start of our selection is moving zero seconds to three seconds, selecting eventually nothing. So that's one way we might use text animators. It's kind of the default that it comes in as, but it's not particularly smooth. And even if we go in here, go into the advanced, maybe we change it from working on characters to words. Does that help us out? Kind of. What if we ease low? We just we just dial up the ease low, which is usually how we want to be making things ease in here. All right, it's getting a little bit closer, but still we have to wait for one word to finish before the next one starts. And you know, if this was on lines, you know, you can see that even more that one line has to finish and then we move on to the next line. If we want some flow in here, we're gonna have to change from using a square shape to using a ramp up shape. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me just go ahead and reset some of these values. So we're based on words, the range selector is back at being from here to there. And you can see that over the course of this entire range, we're ramping up from not applying our desired changes to applying them fully. So from the start to the end, we get this kind of gradient through here. So far, so good. How do we animate this though? Well. We would probably make the range a little bit smaller 
So we're only selecting half of the text at a time from 0% to 50%. And then we're going to animate the offset. So at the end, I want to offset this, push it all the way through, offset it 100%. And then at the beginning, I'm going to set this to minus 50 because we know that the size of the range selector goes from zero to 50%. So if we push it negative 50, it'll be all the way out at the beginning. So we'll watch that playback. Ooh, that's fairly smooth, still kind of linear. So this is where we would take our ease low, jack that right up. And now look at this lovely, subtle, soft block quote coming in, making us feel good when we watch it in our Instagram feeds or wherever. And it's all perfectly nice. I really recommend using the ramp up shape and pushing it through using offset instead of using the square shape. But there may be different stylistic things that you want to do with yours. Just remember that the shape and the easing is where most of those nuances are going to come in. But if we want to make this into a template that we can just swap out the contents here, well, when I start typing in new things, the position of this text layer is now totally crazy. It's in the completely wrong spot. It doesn't look good. So if we're going to make this into a template, we need to use some expressions to make sure that no matter what we type in here and no matter how it animates, it ends up in the middle center, nice and justified exactly where we want it. How are we going to make that happen? I like to use a little anchor point wrangling that looks a little something like this. We start by defining T and T is going to be a variable that stands in for time that we're interested in looking at at checking how big this text layer is. So the reason we're doing that is because we're animating this with position. So this box size is actually changing over time. After three seconds, all of our animating has resolved. We're done. The box has returned to its sort of, we'll say, resting state. So if we were only reference the time when this is at rest, we can be certain that we're going to have that control we want. So how do we get that control? Well, we define variables for the left, top, height, and width, and then we use a little bit of math. So for the X coordinate, we're going to look at the left, which is the distance from the baseline to the left side of the text box. Then we're going to add to it the width divided by two. And then we do a similar method uh, from the top. And then we add the height divided by two. That gives us our X and Y coordinate at the end, which causes that anchor point to be locked in the middle center. So if we go ahead, go window, central graphics, then we could call up uh, this composition, step three template, dot, 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 oops. And you'll see why in a moment when we solo selected properties and we bring in that source text and we type in a new quote, a new quote. When we accept those changes, you see, we no longer have the formatting on the author down there. They're gone. So even if we wanted to type one in, they would have the same formatting as the rest of the block, which is not exactly what we're after. So we need to somehow get control. We need to somehow have two text inputs that still end up justified in the middle center. <laughs> oh, we're moving on to challenge mode here, but don't worry. Don't worry, I got you. So we first need to create say an author box and a quote box. We're going to use that anchor point trick again to make sure that the anchor point is in the middle center of both of these. And then I parent them, I parent them both to a null object. So if both of them are parented and their position is zeroed out, they should be right on top of each other. We know they would live exactly at zero, zero, right on top of each other. Then we just have to move the author layer over and down to the exact location we want it to end up in. So if I call open the position here, I'm going to show you exactly what's been going on. Again, we're using that variable for time because we're only interested in these things after they've come to rest. So they've done all their animation and then then we're at three seconds. So now we're we're looking at the size of these layers and we're setting some variables. We're calling up the width and height of this layer itself. Then we're creating variables for the width and height of the quote. Then we're calling up a variable that we have rigged up to a slider control so we can adjust the padding, the distance between these two layers vertically. I think that's a nice touch. And then we do a little bit of math. So variable X, the horizontal, is going to be equal to half of this quote's width subtract half of the author's width, which would end up pushing us to the right. And then we remove half of this thing. So we move back to the left. And then we're right here. We're right on this line we want to be at. And then for the height, of course, we just need to adjust down. We need it to go down by half of the quotes total height. And then it has to go down by 
half of the author's total height, and then it has to go down by the amount of padding, which would land us here. So no matter what happens to this layer, this author layer will be obeying all of those rules that we put in place for it. And we can take both of these individual source texts and put them into the essential graphics window now. Now you're probably wondering, well, now wait a minute, how do these things remain centered in the middle center of this comp? What kind of terrible trickery are you up to? Well, they're both parented to the same null. Well, if we do a similar trick and we parent this null to something we call maybe the origin, then we just have to bump the position of this null by that vertical change that is added by the padding and by this author here. So it just needs to move by half of the author's height and by half of the padding, and that'll bump us right into the middle center. We're just adding things, dividing things, subtracting them, and it's all relative because we're using these variables. So now whatever we type in, uh, no matter how terrible the quote might be, it'll still look good because it'll be formatted in the middle center. But we should not be content with just having text. We should maybe put uh, some embellishments, some frames. It can be relatively easy to do since we just learned about all of the relative math we have access to. If we want to make, say, a rectangular frame around this, all we need to do is bring out a rectangle path, make sure it lives in the middle of the composition, and it just needs to adjust its size based on the width and height, or, or perhaps the combined width or combined height of all the layers you want it to encompass. So just make sure you're adding together all the appropriate heights and widths and paddings so that it can encompass all of the things, add in a little bit of padding for yourself, and you should be all good. Another little embellishment that you might want on here are something like these little quote marks. Now they're living up in the corners of this rectangle, we can make them procedurally in the corners by, again, parenting them to a null in the middle. And this is going to be true of any kind of layer. If you want like a little logo or a little loading thing or just a little swirly do, you know, you would take that thing and you would just make its position relative to this text layer's width and height, dividing it by two or negative two, depending on what corner you want it to be in. So using this relative math, again, you're able to push these things into the relative areas you want them to live. So no matter what content you put in, you're gonna be fine. Well, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams tutorial channel. Hope you've enjoyed learning about animating these block quotes using the text animator a little bit better. I'd love to see what you make with this. If you end up creating anything with the stuff you learn on this channel, please tweet it at me. I'm at EC Abrams on there, or you can tag me on Instagram, EC Abrams on there as well. If you like learning this kind of thing, motion design, visual effects, after effects, all the good stuff, then subscribe to this channel. We get up new tutorials here all the time, and there's even a live show that happens on Fridays. So make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Thank you again for watching, be well, and I'll see you next time.